Uh, so welcome, uh, Duke, again on this podcast. Thank you, Maria. Uh, we Glad to be here. <laughs> Always. <laughs> again. Um, I remember where we stopped when we were talking about uh, the first time I heard about your dream. Yeah. Um, and it was the Dome 2020. Yes. And it was at uh, one of the session, a breakout session of uh, Saw Your Dream, and that I collaborated with Venture Cafe. And I remember seeing the slides, and I, uh, and I saw, you know, the beautiful pictures that you had, and then it was Dome 2020, and you started talking about it. I was blown away. <laughs> I couldn't believe you were serious, but you were serious, and this is, this is like a dream, a dream. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not selling my dream. Yeah, exactly. You were selling <laughs> I your dream. I succeeded, actually. <laughs> you were selling your dream. I heard it correct. You were really selling your dream, and I, remember, I don't really remember the quote that it was saying, but it was a beautiful quote about the dreams. What was it again? I you don't remember it? <laughs> Me either. It was something about uh, you're, uh, like, uh, you can dream, but so, some people can dream, but some people can wake up and just work about that dream. Well, the, all it's, it's, a dream is like, okay, but the execution part is the most important. You, exactly. If you want to execute, you have to execute on your dream, otherwise it will never happen, it will stay dream. That's basically the, yeah. the root of the thing. Exactly. Dream, but wake up and work. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's also the most difficult part of it. Because it's dreaming is easy. I mean, you can dream that you can fly. Yeah. But you're making yourself go <laughs> to fly. It's it's like you have to do something, yeah. and then you have also you have to do some of the impossible. But everybody says you never be able to do. Yeah, that. You cannot. So, well, there you go. You have to try to make it work. Okay, let's then uh, talk about the first idea when it came to you. Dome 2020 Burning Man. Well, Dome 2020, we had this idea with the, a couple of Yes Delft entrepreneurs to do something on Burning Man. So uh, we have this com- this, this, these companies in Yes Delft that do mechanical things. And in Burning Man, you could see a lot of strange cars. Yeah. And, and if you look at the pictures, that picture that was in the presentation, huge, like a buggy. Yeah. But then a buggy that's three times as big as a normal buggy. So it's, uh, they can do things that are out of proportion. Yeah. And basically, they also it is is what people said, and I'm, I, I've been there as well. It is virtual reality in reality. Yeah, yeah. So you feel like you're in the movie, but it's not movie; it's the real thing. And this is because the art and the atmosphere, everything together, makes it sort of a dream environment. And you went to Burning Man before. Yes. So you went. I think it was 2000 and Five. yeah. So 2005, you went there. What was the first time that drawn you to go to Burning Man? Well, it's just, you know, nothing actually. I had no clue what it was. I just heard it would be interesting and I just wanted to see it basically. We were, we were there, we were there with, with, uh, with our business. So yeah. it's easy, to, you know, if you're there, it's easy to do that. And you yeah. just go there and have a look. And I, I just plan to go one day and you can't go one day. It's just like <laughs> before you're there, it's one day travel. So. Yeah. Mis- miscalculation, but it's it's. I tasted the atmosphere, and at the time it wasn't that expensive. Now it's pretty expensive. You have to buy a ticket for four hundred fifty uh, dollars. And before you didn't buy a ticket, or did you you had. I to did buy. buy t- you had to buy tickets. You can't get in. And I had some friends that had everything arranged, so uh, it was easy to go there. And you didn't like. Oh my God! Uh, now it was. It was like in the desert. Yeah. Sandstorms. Yeah. Uh, it, Totally out of this mm-hmm. world. Like it's 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 like it's a strange sensation. Basically. And you liked it. It was special. Yeah. I, I, at the time, I'm I'm not sure if I liked it, but it was special. It was for sure. It's a once in a lifetime experience that you have to see or to believe. You can you can only talk about it if you've been there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because that's... you can see, look at YouTube nowadays, and you can get a, a sense of the atmosphere. But being there is. Completely different story. Yeah, I get it. Get, uh, put put the 3D glasses on, then look at the YouTube uh, movies, and then you get some sort of a feel. And then you still have 45 degrees. Go sit in an oven. Yeah. <laughs> put your own glasses on. <laughs> and, and wind, you have a big fan blowing with this hot air. Yeah, and, oh, still, you get, you're, yeah, and still you yeah. like it. And yeah. then you have this music, very loud, and there's people <laughs> dancing there, and there's there's a lot of girls in bikinis because yeah. it's 45 <laughs> degrees. There are a lot of guys in, in swimming swimming trousers because it's 45 degrees and strange outfits. Some are really t- totally in, yeah. in, into something else. I saw people are going all all out with their outfit and stuff. So yeah, I can imagine. It's something to experience. It's it's like 
why do people climb a mountain? Why do people travel to South Africa or whatever? They want to experience something new. Well, this is something new as well. Oh, well, I am going to go. I'm going to go. Go 2020. I'm going. I'm counting on you. <laughs> I'm going. Okay, so, and then, so you've been there, then you had this idea because you saw how they're doing with, uh, with, uh, I'm going to call them toys. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> big, it's, it's basically toys. Big, it's big, art big, pieces, basically. Yeah, uh, and big one and a huge big. one. And then, how did the idea came about to start this uh, Dog 2020? Well, the, 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 uh, you had this idea with a couple of yes, Delf companies, and we should do something there. And you can go and visit and walk about, and then it's, it's that, but you yeah. can also do something there. So you can leave an impression and, and position, yes, Delf, we as entrepreneurs, we can do something as well. Yeah. That was the initial idea. Then I talked to uh, Joelle Freitas, which is uh, our new female, the first female uh, entrepreneur in residence in yes, Delft. And uh, well, I was talking in the restaurant and we were talking, what does your, your bucket list say? I want to go to, to Burning Man. I said, okay, that's nice because we want to go there too. And uh, was with a couple of years left, oh, what are you going to do? Are we going big, big machine, or like big spider or whatever? And I said, no, 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 you should do something sustainable because it's everybody's doing machines. Yeah. Do something sustainable, show that you can also leave uh, like an imprint on the world that's not like a CO2 imprint, like yeah. because it has, it's full of diesel uh, generators because they, they, they need power. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of waste, and they say leave no trace. But if you look at you know, it's, there's, there's 75,000 people, put them look, look at the festival, what left after the festival is over. Yeah, you can see this garbage, you know, this garbage are all over the place. So it's, it's like it's not very sustainable, in fact. So then she said, Why not do a, a glass house? And you know the the fortunate thing is that in Yesdale there is a company that's doing glass houses in deserts. <laughs> so that's a simple one. That means that one company can already do it. Yeah. So the the only thing you have to find is a glass house, build a glass house, and he can have he has the installations to actually do climate uh, control in the glass house. He can desalinate water, so salt water or or water that's that's brim water that's a little salty or a little too much iron, they can, can clean the water and use it for irrigation. Uh, so that's covered. Then you need power. Well, we have Kite Power, which is a company in Just Delft uh, that uses a uh, kite, a huge one, 40 meters in, in span. Wow. That's, that's big. Um, and it flies eight figure eights in the sky, pulls on the rope, and the rope pulls on the dynamo generator, the generator generates electricity. So you have electricity, one megawatt. One megawatt, you can you have a pretty big light show with one megawatt. Yeah, but this kite doesn't it need wind? It needs wind, but it's on high levels. Uh, they go high, like uh, high in the sky, and one kilometer, two kilometers high. There's always wind. Okay, wow. Wow. And you know sometimes there's too much wind, so oh, yes. Nice. <laughs> and we probably take a generator for backup power if there's no wind or the thing goes broke. But still, you have to, to we'll put the effort in there. So they, we had the power covered, we had the glass house covered. Um, then we said, okay, we need something to grow. Yeah. And uh, I had the, on the on the dinner. I was uh, there with the guy, and he's in charge of a big seed uh, enricher. They call it in Dutch. I don't know what the English name. They, he makes like plants, basically mm. seeds for plants. He said, oh, you have some some seeds that you you put them in the ground, and within a couple of days you have like a one meter high vegetation. Wow. So. That. So the glass house will be really green inside. It will be green inside. Can because I that's the idea. Oasis and, and the green the grass. And, and, and grass, there's also certain grass that can grow very quickly. It's a special desert grass that will grow very quickly in that it doesn't need a lot of water. Uh, there's another uh, company that has the gel that can contain the water in the soil. So yeah, you mix yeah. it with the soil that contains the water. So vegetation also covered. Another box. Check. <laughs> Um, then we said, okay, now we need the uh, we need music. So I talked to a guy at uh, at a bank, and he said, well, I'm interested in, in uh, joining, and we can we can do something here. And he said, um, I want to do the music because I'm into music. And I said, okay, that's good because we don't have anybody. And I said, I'll bring a G DJ as well because I have a friend, and he is a DJ, a well-known DJ, and he always said I wanted to actually have a show on Burning Man one day. I said, okay, fine, and then we have a DJ and we have music, that's covered, right? Yeah. And oh, by the way, who is the DJ? Armin van Buren. <laughs> and Armin van Buren, I don't have your look, do you know him? Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, that's, that's another one, checkbox, checked. 
Now, well, then you have transportation and somebody that, that wants to make a dome or a, a glass house. And we say a glass house is a complicated thing because it's glass, it's, it's fabrication, you need to actually build on site something that needs to be there that can be, a, be, be commissioned in a day. Yeah. So we came up with the idea of an umbrella that you fold out, you have one in your pocket, like yeah, in yeah, your the bag, the smaller ones. Yeah. So if you, you pull it out, so you pull it out of a container, yeah. and then you fold it open, and then you press it down again, and all of a sudden the umbrella is on the table, yeah. with the stem on the table in the container, but it's central, and it's, you have your dome. Yeah, 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 so yeah. if you make this umbrella big enough, you have a dome. So then the idea is, we find a company, I'm talking to two companies that can do it, and uh, find a company that can make this umbrella, but then the size of a stadium. Yeah, wow. It's gonna be really huge. Yeah. And, but uh, did you, before you're gonna go to Dome, are you guys gonna execute this uh, big machine, I'm gonna say, here, before yeah. you're gonna take it there? So you're yeah. gonna execute it here, see that yeah. it works, put all the parts together, yeah. test it, then go yeah. there, or are you gonna be the... No, 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 because you're if you, if, here. No, you have to do it here. The, the whole thing like will be huge. Yeah, yeah. And the project will also be huge in, in, in uh, money. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Because so, you're gonna have to transport everything there. Well, transportation, back and forth. transportation. I don't expect that to be because we have in Holland we have several big shipping companies. Um, so they want to sponsor this as well. Wow. And the nice thing is that you cannot put stickers, sponsoring stickers on the installation while you're on Burning Man because it's it's a giving society. Yeah. Right? So you cannot do. Advertisement. Yeah, exactly. But they said we don't <laughs> worry about it because this will go viral yeah. and everybody will know who's behind it. Later on. Later on. <laughs> so and I'm also in the Expo Commission. I said, okay, I, I, I told the Expo Commission this is how we want to promote this. And they said, we want to have this on the Expo. So maybe in 2020 is the Expo in, in uh, Dubai, yeah. is in the desert. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> natural fair. Perfect. So yeah, I said, exactly. okay, we can, well, because the initial plan was that after the Burning Man, we'll donate this to the UN, and then the UN can use this to actually uh, move it about to different areas where they need a glass house type of environment, where they need to create food or whatever, uh, and they can't because they're in the desert, or it's, it's more like it's sanding over. I love that this is going to be used afterwards yeah. to help. Uh, the world. That's why the whole thing will be in containers, transportable, quickly movable to something else. Nice. What is the challenge that you're facing right now? With Money. This? <laughs> of course, investors. You haven't found any investors? Oh, no, yes. I, really? I don't think that eventually it won't be the biggest problem. I think the biggest problem, the nightmare will be to put everything together. Yeah, yeah. And then go there and physically if installation there in the desert, like 40 degrees, 45 degrees Celsius during the daytime and 0 degrees during the evening and the nighttime. Yeah. Uh, approximately how many men are going to be... I think a big team. I think like 50 or 60 or whatever. Oh wow, that's not a lot actually. Well, so <laughs> to, to, uh, You have to move them over there. They all have to have airline tickets. They all have to have yeah, some place to sleep. Yeah. So I booked a couple of RVs already in, in, uh, in uh, Nevada to, to make sure we at least have something. Wow, you're already doing it. Yes. Oh wow. So, uh, I'll go there anyway, so <laughs> we or without you know, the dome, but yeah, I'll yeah. go there anyway. <laughs> so are you going to do? You, are you gonna wear an outfit or put some effort in, uh, in your outfit or not? No, no? I, don't so. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's the least of my words. Okay. You can go, yeah, we have in, in, I live in the south, right, in Holland, we have carnival. Yeah. If you want an outfit, I just go there and I'll One have an outfit, <laughs> just 10 minutes time. Yeah. No worries. It's, uh, um, that's actually, uh, Really nice because I know the carnival down there. They wear the ones and then all day. Uh, I bet you know what the carnival. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I've never been though. Oh yeah, sure, of course. I really never no, been. of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally believe you. I really have never been. No, I was okay. so close to go there, but then it was really, 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 really cold and it yeah, was well. raining. Yeah, but you know, you get warm, and so as soon as you're in the cafe, you'll be warm enough pretty quickly. That's you know? what they told me. Like, like you're gonna get uh, warm because people are drinking, going out, walking, and somehow you. But I, I was coward. Maybe um, like maybe this year. No, actually next year. Next year. Because I already finished, right? I already done. No, it's in yeah, it's in February. Yeah, so uh, next year. Talk about next year. Do you have any uh, resolution for next year? Ah. Or have you accomplished your resolution for 2018? Whoa. <laughs> 
Well, I didn't. For starters, I didn't have him on, <laughs> so I just, <laughs> I just take it as it comes, right? Wow. But um, 2019 should be the year for Dutch Analytics, actually. For? Pretty sure. The, the company I'm working for. Now, okay, so you're focusing on, uh, focusing on, completely yeah. on. This, this needs to do, do. This needs to happen now. You cannot just wait, sit and wait, and just you know, it won't go by itself. No, and never ever start a blue white team grow and can take by itself. Yeah. And this needs to grow because of the. It's an AI company. It means that half of the startups are AI companies, and the competition potentially is huge. Uh, the one that gets there first takes everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, usually if you're the first, that's it. You get the name, you get the exactly. And then the second is usually. So, we're trying to be the first. Yeah, yeah. I am. I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to work, but we get, at least we want to try. Yeah, at least you. you it's, it's the mantra. And, and um, so, 2019 should be the, the year that the challenge is, is big. And, yeah, big what do you think about AI? You know, if you, we talk about uh, 10, 10, 20 years. 10 years ago, there was nothing called artificial intelligence. There was AI in the sense of you know, automation, but AI now is something. There was AI because we actually, in 95, we actually sold an AI solution, a prediction model yeah. on a rubber formulation. Yeah, the, your first uh, company. Yeah. So, and 95, that's more than 20 years ago. The sense is, what I'm trying to say, it wasn't called AI. You know, it wasn't. It called... was actually called AIware, believe it or not. <laughs> Yes, ready. <laughs> Artificial intelligence where? Yeah, software AI where. And it's a pity because I want to use the name, but it's still there. The company that, that originally started with AI where is still on the market. Okay. They got bought by uh, Computer Associates. Yeah. And they implemented in, I think Computer Associates implemented in their, in their uh, security software. Yeah. So to predict what, uh, to actually, to, to, well, predict to actually uh, determine what would be a trap. Yeah. One one other thing is that I usually hear people don't believe in artificial intelligence, they don't believe in blockchain because they don't understand it, they don't believe in automation. What would you say to them? Well, this is the same thing with the iPhone. When the iPhone came out, there was an interview on YouTube, but if you don't believe it, then it's find the YouTube movie. And it's a phone that they did the interviews with people on the street and said, okay, would you have a phone that could access the internet? No, no, no way, I don't need that. I do that at home and I need a phone to make it phone call. Yeah. And then first text came out and you had intelligent text, you can quicker uh, type things. Yeah. And you had this, this, this small uh, services on on the split screen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the iPhone came out. And then it's the iPhone moment for the industry the, because Nokia didn't see it coming and they stayed on their own phone and now they're gone. Blackberry, yeah. Blackberry as well. And there's a lot of other phone companies that, that didn't make it. And that's because the iPhone changed, disrupted, and changed the, the perception of the users, you and me, what the phone could do. Yeah. So now you have internet in your hand. And that was also what, what Job said at the time. You have this in, the internet in your hand. And that changed the industry. So AI will change the industry in the same way. It will, and actually it already does. You have the home speakers. You ask it, and your telephone, Siri. Yeah. If you ask it, uh, Siri, find me the the best restaurant in the area. Yeah. It will give you an answer, and it uses AI to do it. Yeah. To interpret what you are said, where what you are asking, interpret that, and make that a search, and come back with the answer. Yeah. I. So it's everywhere already. Yeah. So people that don't believe it, they have their eyes closed because, in fact, even if they call and they get an answering machine, it's not answering machine; it's a bot, and the bot is an AI software. Yeah, and then they, they, so do you think that... It's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere and then it's just about time to work to be realized. You know, the AI, the, the, the buzz around AI is that there's open AI uh, uh, that, that said that if we don't control the development, I believe it, that, that is true, and uh, all of a sudden we will reach a point where AI is clever, more clever than we are, and that it also is able to learn itself more. Than, so it will accelerate the learning process. If you're going beyond the threshold, yeah. there's no way back. This yeah. is why this Elon Musk and all these guys are warning. If you make it too intelligent, it could happen. Nobody knows what will come out. That's the trick. That's the scary part. So if you're going beyond the threshold of, of what you can control it, it will learn so fast that you're, you're always too late to react. Oh my god. 
yeah. and that's what people don't understand and it's difficult to comprehend but if you think about this it's like rolling a ball if it's or a wildfire if you make a fire campfire and it starts spreading yeah there will be a moment that you cannot control it anymore because it will spread so wide that you can't just put it out everywhere yeah and this is right now exactly with the same with ar AI. if the developments go so fast that somebody is is uh, developing a, a malicious application you know we're in serious shit <laughs> <laughs> there's no way that we're gonna go back i i uh, i read uh, an article about a company that created two bots that can communicate together and, mm. and learn a language and then at some point the two bots were talking to each other in a language that nobody can understand no i mean they were so scared of the back and forth of what was happening so do you think that we're going to reach that point because you know humans but we're going to push it to the back push it more so we're going to get there but do you think is is there a way that we can uh kind of no it's happening it's happening maybe how we can uh, control this well they say that that, that the first is a, a group of people said that the, the development to get there will be so far away they think that it will be next year or not next year, but in like 10 years or 20 years. Yeah. And some say it will take 100 years before we get there. So okay. I wouldn't worry about it too much now. I don't yeah. think if they are, is it <laughs> true? If it's, if it's really true that in like in 2030, you would have AI which would be more intelligent than a human. And that's the exponential uh, development that, the, that the, the, the world is going in an exponential dimension okay. development and not a linear one. And we think linear. Yeah. And that could be an interesting situation where you can have the situation where the AI would be uncontrollable. Yeah. Um, and they now think about you know building in certain certain safety measures that you could stop it. But, you know. According to your knowledge and experience, what jobs are going to be disappearing in a month or two, and what jobs will be will still be there? Because we know automation is coming, AI is coming. You know, uh, I'm developing a chatbot that could replace an assistant. You know, so you don't that, well, the assistant, maybe that, assistant that, and, and, you know, I would the like you as an assistant <laughs> rather than have, have a chatbot there. Right? Yeah, but it's also the social part of it, and that's the thing I think that people underestimate that is, there's a lot of things there that you need a face, a body, and now they have well, it's because a the face and a body now there is a company that creates. Yes, I know, but still, I mean, it's obviously a computer, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, with the emotions and with the irrationalities yeah. because that makes people interesting if you are predictable you're not interesting anymore yeah so it's uh, it's that combination so I think it will be uh, which which job will be absolute taxi driving because we either way we get automotive driving automotive uh, yeah. automation for cars for cars autonomous uh, cars so that job will be there and right, quickly as well I think quicker than we expect yeah. Because everybody looks at the current development, but we are in the exponential phase, and, and behind the curtains, maybe they are much further down the road. Yeah. So maybe they, they maybe they can already do completely automatic. But it needs also the decision on if you are in the car and you are about to to get into an accident, are you the car saving you or the other person? Oh. It's a dilemma. That. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, is the car saving you and oh, driving over a, a wife and kids? Or is it saying, okay, making the decision is wife and kids, so I'm going to kill the driver? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I, in, uh, I, driving yeah. against a tree or I'm missing the tree and I hit the pedestrians. That's, that's the thing. So there's the, the, there's the there's a hundreds of other cases, edge cases in, in automotive driving, but also in any application for AI where you can say, okay, it is complicated. Yeah. Um, so, taxi drivers, because we have automation, that, that will be gone. What about jobs that has routine in it, where, you know, whether it's a human or machine, it's the same thing, like, you know, in a data entry or uh, something that's just routine, and, you know. I think those will go away. Probably. Yeah. Manufacturing jobs, like in the, in the, in the automotive, the, like it's a good example, because it's highly automated already. Yeah. I think humans will go away from the line and they will serve the machines. Yeah. So they will make sure that the machines can yeah. operate it change tools and try to improve it. Mm -hmm. So you get operators instead of workers. Yeah. And I think the same workers they because they know the skills will be actually uh, growing into the operator job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means that you don't replace the job, they get you lift it higher into a higher higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the job that don't even exist? Do you think maybe there will be jobs that 
even jobs that don't exist already. I think the, the, the AI specialist, I mean, they have serving, serving, uh, installing AI systems on consumer products and yeah. things like that. Uh, your home set up your home block, that kind of stuff. I think there will be some sort of a service that will be, be so I think it's it's a it's a move away from from routine jobs. Yeah. I mean, the routine jobs can be easy with the computer. Do you uh, have uh, are you or are you excited about the phones now are going to be controlled by your iPhone? I have a friend who. Uh, I have a home that's controlled by my iPhone. So yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> like his his phone can control the light. Yeah, I do that as well. Close yeah. the, the, the curtains and things. Like yeah, that. and the, the oven and stuff like that. And his girlfriend was at his house, and then she was cooking uh, a chicken in the oven, and he told her like, uh, "How's the how's the, the cooking going?" She's like, "How do you know?" He's like, "I know that you're using it. I see you set it to an hour. So what are you cooking for the chicken?" Or, and it was so scary at the same time, really amazing. But don't you think that this is going to be used for robbery later? If I could know that you're not at home because I know from your from your data that I retrieved from yeah, the home still. system that you're not home, so yeah. I can know when you're home. That's you why I really invest in security companies. Okay, so security companies not is going to be on the rise because everything is going to be automated. And the security companies now concentrate on internet kind of stuff yeah. and they will, they will trickle down and you have security already for your home burglary alarm and things like that yeah. they will do all the other stuff as well so they do your, your uh, IP, uh, IT security they will do that probably with firewalls things like that and so your, your burglar alarm guy yeah. will now install also burglar system for your <laughs> internet <laughs> and then your house uh, automation there's actually there's a movie I don't know the title but there was a guy who was he, he ran an IT company and he had his house and everything was controlled by a computer. Yeah. Everything. And uh, so also closing the doors and, and the, the water, the, the sound, there was no switch. There was no, he had just tell the system what it should do and it will do it. And then he got uh, this, had this problem, this little small problem, and there was a hacker and the, the guy that was very quick with computers worked with in his factory, in his company, and he invited him home. I said, fix this for he did, but it was malicious and he was actually falling on the dollar. He was oh, actually having an eye on the dollar. And then this whole thing developed that the guy changed the, the software and had control over the whole house. Well, things like that, that's the nightmare, you know, that you don't want to get into. Do you think there maybe we could put one big switch that... I think that will be something. There's, there's, there's a, I have an appliance at home, there's a kill switch. Yeah. If I press it, then the internet is gone instantly. Yeah. I think that we should think about that. I think that sort of things will happen. Yeah, that can uh, help people in the time of danger. That just switch yeah. and everything can become manual yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, one of my uh, questions that I ask all the guests is, where do you see yourself five to ten years from now? On my boat in the Pacific, somewhere <laughs> warm island. <laughs> nice. That's it. <laughs> no internet whatsoever. No. Nobody can reach you. At that time, you know, I hope that you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm done. Yeah, that's it. You know. And any books that you're reading right now? Uh, books. Yeah, I read a book from uh, Jochen Blaser actually on valuing your company. It's a small book, but it's an interesting reading. Okay. So, what's the value of your company? Is it in Dutch? It's in English. Oh, okay. Uh, I will read. It's on on Ball and everywhere. And, uh, on LinkedIn, I have a link to his page. If you Jochen Blaser dot it's nice and because it's, it's there's a lot of companies that, that are struggling. What is your worth of your company? If you have a company as well, what is it worth at the moment? Mine? So. Um, this, I'm providing uh, knowledge for experts and well, tourists. How yeah. much is it worth? If you would sell it, Ooh, you I would wouldn't... sell yourself. But then, then you know, that's the, that's the one thing. Uh, say that you had it all transferred into your bank. Yeah. <laughs> Or you have How an assistant well, that you I actually... I have no idea actually. Well, there you go. This is what the book is about. Oh, nice. I will read it. Then I will have a perspective of where do I want my company to go because and then I have an end point of what is my company worth. Yeah. I will uh, look into it. Um, it this, if you have this mic in front of you and it can be broadcasted to every single human being on this planet, what would you 
Um, what would be my message? I think it would be uh, think about others and not only think about yourself. I think that's the message. I see too many people that are, and then LinkedIn and Facebook is an exponential thing for that. It's only portraying themselves. Yeah. And you see photos of themselves. <laughs> I am here. I am there. I've won this. I've done that. Why? I mean, try to be open to somebody else and also open your mind for problems and opportunities from somebody else. I'm I trying to stay away from this economy that we have on me, uh, see me fly. Yeah, yeah. So that would be my message to you. Okay, well, so think about others, not only yeah. yourself. Any last call of action? Well, just do it. I mean, uh, go to execution. Now, don't stay in the dreams. I'm, I'm staying in the dreams too often. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I have many dreams and uh, I'm trying to execute them. Because also my time clock is also ticking. I'm getting older and I want to do something. Uh, and the Burning Man one is one and the other one, the, this good side, it's another one. And do you think if you executed both of them, you, you feel like you have done what you wanted to be here? I think I've, I've done 10 years of coaching for startups. I think I've already done that. I'm, I'm now in a phase that, you know, uh, it's okay. I mean, I've done 10 years of coaching and giving to companies and yeah. very seldom you get something back. Like, uh, thank you or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is fine. I don't care because it's, they are in the, in the rush and in the, in the drive of, of getting there and they forget about you and people that help them. Which is okay because it's the part of the giving them. But I'm now going entering a phase where I'm going to do this thing for myself yeah. instead of just giving it all to others in my time. Because the time is the most, yeah. most valuable asset is time. Very Use it. That's very, very true. That's, that's, I think that bombshell it says so. Yeah. Okay, um, would you, how would people reach you if they, they want to get to get to know you? I'm, I'm easily reachable. LinkedIn, uh, Duke at yes, Delft, dot .nl. Uh, they can find me. Alright. Well, Yeah. And you're doing it so. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yay!